shit, he has more. Interesting. Let's get our shields back online. Oh shit, you could actually crash into stuff. That's what one of the things I was wondering. So our shields being offline is pretty... There we go. Shields back online. Yeah, we're not very, very strong yet. Oh shit, it looks like one of our strike craft went down at the end, in the end there. No, no, never mind. Looks like we're good. Is there, is there no loot here? Sometimes they do drop loot on the map. Is one of the things. Like on the actual tactical map. Wow, no Well, we got some resources, I mean, but... I was hoping to get some parts from that. Another bandit fight. We might want to hop in on that. Let's check out this lore, though. It is impossible to say for sure where the dark entity came from. Some believe it existed before time itself. Others believe it is responsible for maintaining the precarious cosmological constant through its will alone. Regardless, it is now known that the resource res stems entirely from this creature. While the entity cannot normally be physically observed, it does have a direct effect on the universe around it, flooding space with res. The function of res serves to attract technologically advanced species toward the creature, where they then can be corrupted by the dark infection. The one thing I'm not sure about is if it cannot be directly deserved, how the fuck did they destroy it? We actually, as you know, our fucking save got fucking shit on <laughs> right before that, pretty much, so. We never actually got around to it. Interfaction dispute? Uh, we're just gonna leave them to that. Um, wow. Are they- what the fuck? This is already pretty fucking awesome, if you ask me. It may not look like much, but all this shit going on with different captains is pretty fucking neat. I mean, look at this. These two, this guy just came to assist this guy in a battle. It's now a 2v1 battle. And there's this fucking interfaction war. They just they just declared peace on each other. Alert. The mothership could be improved by adding more core modules. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, I know. We need to find some Oh, there's junkyards up here on the place. Find a raid. Somehow, Arena. for some void forsaken reason, this galaxy isn't quite violent enough for some people. That's why we have simulation arenas. They kind of work like a mind-rotting video game, giving homicidal psychopaths a safe environment to practice. It might not be such a bad idea if we gave it a go. I know it hurts, but we just might learn something, and maybe earn a few slivers of scrap for our troubles. One of the things I think I'm going to do is, I think part of the issue is... We're going to put it right on the p cusp before it changes. Simply, I feel one of the reasons why we're not doing as long well combat is because of the difficulty. I have a feeling, and it's just scaling, damn it, and stuff. I don't like that type of difficulty increase. It feels too artificial. It feels kind of forced. I'm not even gonna get in on that. Let's get another pack of lore. The Sovereignty of Science. I think this will be our second one of them? Maybe the first one, I'm not sure. Following the Dark Infection, a few scientists established a group dedicated to the investigation of the Dark Entity. They reached out to the best and brightest survivors the Void had to offer. Unfortunately, they were plagued by constant bandit attacks until they enacted a minimal contact policy with other factions. Now they cling to life like the rest of the galaxy, having all but given up on the scientific endeavors it was founded upon. Awareness expanded.
landing. Let's see, find a raid. It appears one is going on over there. Let's uh let's finish exploring this little corner of the galaxy right now. You go find another raid later. I want to know what resources we have and where. Looks like a bandit hive here. That does look like pretty much every sector almost has some sort of lore to it. Lockdown wars, I'll take it. I've been I'm really interested on the I'm interested on the lockdown wars, so excited As to read more. The fleet arrived at each world. They set up restricted trade access to control the consumption of the precious resource res. It took centuries to establish a planetary infrastructure on each world, leaving some isolated for years on end. As the UTA arrived at these later worlds, they were met with hostility and resentment. Each world they encountered grew more hostile than the last. A galactic resistance force fought against UTA control, destroying ships and hacking warp gates. Seeing the outer worlds as undesirable and res deficient, the UTA simply put minimal effort into controlling them. Segregated from the core worlds, the pandemic thinned the outer world population. The core worlds, on the other hand, were guarded by multiple layers of heavy security, which proved to be invaluable in slowing the corruption of the dark entity. With such strict border control, the UTA was able to hinder the dark infection, while infected worlds were nuked into oblivion. While the lockdown wars began as a pacification movement, it became a necessary quarantine to ensure the survival of the human race. So the lockdown wars are essentially still going on in the original, in the original game. Good to know. And uh, essentially that's the reason why we started in the core worlds during it, uh, because of the Titan Gates, the Outer Worlds pretty much had all these fallen to the infection. Maybe you can learn why Carl looks like a fucking, is a fucking cyborg Dr. now. Carl Menford has had a long and colorful history of mental instability, despite having an uncanny level of intelligence. Though he is physically harmless, he has worked on several controversial UTA projects including the now discontinued lockdown vaccination for children. He ended his UTA career after hijacking a prototype science vessel. After a short time on the run, he discovered Don Gibson and the massive clockwork ship he was building. Appalled by obvious design flaws, he offered his services as head engineer. Though the rest of the crew is perpetually annoyed by his horrific manner, he proved to be indispensable in helping reach the core and destroying the dark entity. I got this fucking steam coming out of it. It's pretty great. We need to find another chunk to, uh, to add to our ship, though. Signal detected. I just have to buy something from some some son of a bitch. Here, let's uh, let's trade with this guy. You got anything? You have jack shit. Vacuum. Interesting. What do you got to trade, buddy? You got 14... Is there a way to view their trading resources? On the fly, is what I'm wondering. I don't think there is. At least no one that I can see. And that costs crap instead of goons. That might be... Something we should consider. Use some right hooks. These things are like the same price as the fucking Rangers. What? A fucking right hook? Are you kidding me? 
Weak cannons and a deadly torpedo. Array of, array of missiles and a cannon. Uh, I think we'll lay up on the strike craft for a little while. There's a... Uh, no real reason for us to uh, get one right now. The only brick post for sub cores. I don't actually want any of those. I'll just have to look for another fight or something. And <laughs> die potting off initiative. Oh dear god. Human history is riddled with examples of reoccurring themes, throwbacks, revolutions, and revelations. One such reoccurrence is the use of colorful metaphors to heighten one's emotional resonance. While it had been commonplace for even kindergarten children to swear and curse for nearly a millennia, it has recently become taboo. The Anti Potty Mouth Initiative is a communal funded program aimed at refining the human language while increasing speaking efficiency by removing filler slang. The initiative overall has been very successful, while the proposed Goran Violence Reduction Program has not received a single vote. The Friends Don't Shoot Friends in the Face program is not even expected to make it to the voting phase. <laughs> so they're okay with, 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 with censoring swear words and shit. <laughs> but no, go, go ahead and murder your friends. Nothing wrong with that. We have so much damn res right now. It's pretty great though, we could trade it for uh, fuel and shit if we need to at some point. Never get tired of this menu. Elsa was born and raised on Earth, which happened to be one of the last worlds to come under UTA control during the lockdown wars. Her and her father were recruited by the UTA to mine the soul system for what little res it had. When her father died, she became aimless and resentful. Eventually, she was befriended by Don Gibson, the leader of the growing UTA resistance. Saving her from eventual starvation. She was fiercely loyal to Don, and became second in command of the Renegade fleet. Despite her troubled past, she had always managed to stay lighthearted and governed by strong morals. She was devastated to discover Don had been under the influence by the infection. Enraged, she took control of the clockwork and crew to hunt down Don and destroy the dark entity. Having eventually satisfied that goal, she has now grown cold and nearly unrecognizable by her fellow crewmates. Driven aimlessly by guilt, she commands the surviving crew of the Clockwork on an endless mission to cleanse the last of the infection. And that's the story, pretty much. Awareness expanded. Do we get data every time we fucking explore something? We do. That is sick. Okay. I'm pr I'm pretty happy with that. Added to cargo. The one thing that's bothering me is it's showing stuff like scavenge field and shit up there, and uh, makes me think that we might be able to randomly come across shit just floating around, bits and pieces. I think we're gonna have to kick some ass for some though. Allows free flight across the galaxy, unlike its gate-to-gate -gate predecessor. It does this by creating a donkey carrot-like warp gate signal at a fixed distance in front of a ship. The ship, in an effort to resolve this, is in a constant state of warp motion toward the warp carrot. The ship is oriented by manipulating the parabolic arc of the warp carrot, forcing the warp donkey field to pivot to the operator's will. <laughs> warp donkey field. An undesirable side effect of the res arrive is an unsatisfactory exit trajectory. The ship tends to exit randomly near large gravity sources within a few light years of the calculated exit. However, unlike real donkeys, which are often ill-tempered and solitary animals, the warp donkey fields are attracted to one another. This attraction allows ships to de-donkey near each other, overcoming the res drive's accuracy shortcomings. <laughs> donkey. I love the donkey carrot analogy. That was fucking wonderful. Area. It was beautiful. <laughs> we are just. Oh my god. We're gonna complete this shit before you complete any real objective at this rate. 9000 integrated, self aware, hyper intelligent operating system. Me. 
is a specialized backend designed software. exclusively for busy space pirates on the go. While the standard weapon and offensive subsystems remain mostly unchanged from last iteration, I now have dedicated ports for both a cappuccino machine and elderly assistance railings for escalators. My onboard power supply uses 1.21 gigawatts less energy, resulting in an 80% drop in combustion related incidents. Jesus, <laughs> 1.21 giga gigawatts? I'm pretty sure that's a, a direct reference to, uh. to fucking While you Back to the Future, though. I connected the data analyzer system to your cerebral cortex. If you select the incorrect button, your brain functions will cease and you will die. No pressure. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> son of a bitch. Uh, let's, uh. Go for weapon damage for now. We still haven't found the green faction yet. Signal detected. Yeah, let's go get that shit. Oh, it's a raid by the blue people, though. Fuck me. Oh, so if I can the other way, I kind of want to help the blue people. Makes me nice. Ish. Blue and green. As blue and green. Yeah, the cosmos, I'm thinking of helping them out. New means of communication and documentation needed to be invented. While warp gates were a surefire way to transport matter, it was not very economical for communication needs. Without the forces exerted by solid matter, transmissions got lost in the warp stream, arriving late, or being relayed to a random gate. Some worlds adapted warp beacons as mail carriers, but these often got raided by bandits, or converted into spam bots. As the population continued to expand, so did the vast distance between worlds. While each world keeps a record of their own occurrences, many of the founding worlds have been destroyed, along with the rich history they once knew. Significant events such as the discovery of Res remain rooted as common knowledge, however it is impossible to determine exactly when these events may have occurred, or for what duration. Yeah, this is one of the biggest issues we actually suffer right now of uh, space exploration. Even now, just to send an instruction to the Mars rover, it takes I think like 15 fucking minutes to send it just a simple instruction, and then receive input back. I mean, it's over like a minute delay just for the moon, actually. Oh, just being in orbit, you wouldn't be able to play any game, any fucking multiplayer games being in orbit. The connection, just, the delay just from the distance, even if you're fucking using a laser, it would still be like half a second to a second behind. It's just, it's, it's just not practical, really. Awareness expanded. Not so much in the fact that you're orbiting pretty damn fast. <laughs> kind of hard to keep a uh, fucking constant laser beam signal on on something. Pretty extensive as well. You need multiple the installations. Or behavioral inner workings of the bandit faction. They survive solely on the theft of other ships, building their infrastructure on scrap and stolen goods. Their spoils are often hoarded at bandit bases in an attempt to entice unwise travelers. While bandits lack the expertise to develop any legitimate army, their relentless and suicidal nature make them a terror of the void. While most simply avoid them at all costs, a lone bandit poses little threat. Their substandard ships make them ideal targets for rookie captains in training. Do we want to hit that raid? I'm kind of tempted just to get the tutorial over with. Under heavy gamma ray bombardment, the natural phasing process of res is slowed, allowing it to be refined and stabilized. Refined res has countless applications. It can be easily transmuted into other forms of matter, making it the dough like material of the universe. It can also be rendered into an energy-producing state often used for warp fuel. Res also happens to make a nice tea, despite its nightmarish origins. <laughs> Astonishingly, the substance has been in a rapid state of change after its initial discovery. The oscillating multi-phase frequency of res has more than tripled in the last decade, 
allowing it to remain in its corporeal state for longer periods. While being nearly impossible to detect in early history, it can now be seen with the naked eye in many cases. Let's see really quickly before we get too deep into stuff. So apparently we're at war with blue already. Or is that whatever. I'm not even sure what we click right there. Thanks to the warp gate network, nearly every corner of the galaxy has been tapped, mined, and left for spoil just as humanity had once done on their home world. The consumption of res grew beyond its rate of renewal. This forced space colonization to the galaxy core where heavier elements like res were more common. This intermix between worlds created starborn pandemics, compelling people to consume even more res to escape the contaminated worlds. Somewhere between the pandemics and the frenzy for res, the United Terran Alliance sought to cease the chaos by inhibiting warp gate travel. The period that followed became known as the Lockdown Wars. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Okay, this is... explains a lot. Suddenly... Where is ours? So this is factions compared to other factions. So blue and green are at war. Red is at peace with everyone right now. Yellow is at war with orange. Orange is at war with yellow, but currently being raided by blue. Uh, these are lone captains. Imperial Imp. We're definitely gonna be making friends here and there, making some allies. And these people are all doing their own shit. And when they die, they they die for good. That's one of the fucking crazy things. This this will be dropping. It is actually a kind of scary concept. Uh, what exactly is gonna happen? It is a uh, it's pretty interesting. Unfortunately, I don't see a way that we could easily see. Our relation with the other factions? Let's see. This shows the members of them as their shit as well. They can have up to 20 captains in a faction. Hmm. So, we have different standings of each individual captain. Okay, well, I'm not really sure. I really wanted a way to view our relations with another faction, but I guess we're not really able to. Let's see, that's going to be three, three ships, three ships, three ships. Okay, we'll just do this one. It's closer. We'll help out orange for now, I guess. Go over and help out blue as well, then, maybe? The owner of the raiding party? Not so much. So, it's actually an individual person as the raider. So, Tox Dr. Toxico is the owner of this raiding party. So, we don't affect the faction as a whole. We affect the individual in the faction. Very, very you know interesting. What the definition of insanity is? Well, it is not doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. I checked the dictionary. However, that is literally the definition of practice. We have all practiced this over and over. Now let's drop those training wheels and execute. Practice is irrelevant. The command and control system is smarter than the sum of all brain matter on board. Simply change the pre-configured weapon configuration to my experimental battle wagon mode. The ship's weapon systems will track and fire independently, unfettered by human ineptitude. Let's see... How do I do the battle wagon mode, apparently? Pushing... 
see. Nice. So we have auto fire essentially. So we can just focus on maneuvering. We graduated from inanimate material. The ship's a tenth of our size. It's a baby step, but I'll take what I can get from this bug. Are we done burning bugs with a magnifying glass? Good, okay, let's carry on. Second start of the aft. Wow, well, our, uh, our guys kicked some ass. So you get some rewards for that. It's nice to know. Uh, let's it should see be weapons. Noted that all wings, noses, and engine modules have onboard weapon systems. Lasers tend to nullify shields. Projectiles excel at displacing armor, while explosives can shred a ship's hull part. Now, of course, these are not rules written in carbonite. The void is full of exotic weaponry for us to play with. It would be wise to familiarize yourself with these weapons, as well as what sort of damage output they specialize in. Speaking of weapons, we do need to upgrade our ship. We've got a moderate chunk of uh, scrap right now. I do kind of want to start trying to carry out the territory of our own at some point, if possible. Ah, oh, shit. They are expanding over there. Hmm. Well, fuck me, there is a... a lot of fucking data and stuff. Let's grab this one, why the fuck not? I want to look for now another we fight. Have achieved a base level of technological excellence, I see no reason to tow around this useless garbage. Trade, steal, kill, rinse, repeat. If I have to look at this ice or much longer, I will gouge your eyes out. I think we, we probably will hop in an arena event. Moonburger! Nice! I was wondering what happened to them. The Moonburger franchise was founded in the year 2899. Originally, Moonburger used actual cow mass. Moonburger switched away from using disgusting animal tissue to nano printed particle meal shortly after the great bovine culling. Using a special blend of radiation and spices, an authentic tasting meat brick is used in all Moonburger products today. Recent claims that Moonburger has been using more than a 50% allowable safety limit of pyroclastic materials in their food has been disproved. <laughs> they're, they're essentially just using fucking shit from volcanoes, rocks. Let's see, what is the other guy in this fight? I actually can't see the bandit strength. They're at level 6? Yeah, let's kick some let's kick some Bennett ice. He's only yeah, he's, he's not much higher level than we are. Engaging. Is he already dead? Jesus. We just got here. Uh, is that our second ranger? I'm actually a little. Did our good ranger die? Whatever. We'll be able to check it here. God, we got like nothing. 